polysaccharides next up in the chain length. Uh, polysaccharides are also called glycans. So if you see the word glycan, it just means polysaccharide. So there are several different parameters that distinguish polysaccharides from each other. Um, one is the identity of the monosaccharide repeating unit. These are polymers in which the monomers are monosaccharides like glucose and fructose, etc. So what those units are makes the polysaccharides different. We can have homopolysaccharides, in which case there's only one kind of monomer, or we can have heteropolysaccharides, which have more than one kind. So you could have two monomers, that's the most common, two different sugars, or possibly three or four or more. So that's one thing that makes polysaccharides different from each other. Another is the length of the polymer chain. Some of these are relatively short, under 100 units. Some of them are up to a million units long. That's a lot of monosaccharides just bonded together. So short, shorter ones are going to be different than longer ones. Another thing that's important is the type of glycosidic linkage between monomer units. And we'll see that in the, I think we're going to talk about four polysaccharides, and we'll see that the type of glycosidic linkage is pretty important. And also the degree of branching. Some of these are straight chains, and some of them have branches. Some have a little bit of branching, some have a lot of branching. So pictures are always nice. This is an illustration of an unbranched homopolysaccharide. So all of the units in it are the same, these little blue hexagons. And they have the same kind of a glycosidic linkage here, and the chain just continues, and it's just one long chain. You can also have a branched chain homopolysaccharide. So again, all the units are the same, but now we have some branching. You can have an unbranched heteropolysaccharide. So you have different units now. And you can have branched chain heteropolysaccharides. So we saw those pictures with all the different monosaccharides. And then you start putting these together and it's just really kind of mind-boggling how many different polysaccharides there could be. Thankfully, there's only a few that are biologically important, and those are the ones we're going to talk about. Polysaccharides do not taste sweet. Sugars, monosaccharides, and disaccharides have a sweet taste. The polysaccharides don't. Polysaccharides do not test positive in Tollin, Tollins and Benedict solutions, so they're considered non-reducing carbohydrates. They have limited water solubility. They are so big, they're not going to dissolve in water very well. But they can form thick colloidal suspensions when the hydroxyl groups on the individual monosaccharides become hydrated. And that's what happens when you use flour or cornstarch to thicken gravy or soup. That starch, the polysaccharide in there, gets hydrated and makes this thick jelly-like stuff. And we can divide polysaccharides into three basic categories, storage, structural, and acidic polysaccharides. So a storage polysaccharide is a polysaccharide that um, stores energy um, in cells. So the monosaccharides are the energy, and the polysaccharide just stores those individual monomers, the monosaccharides. So one type of storage polymer polysaccharide is starch. Starch is a monopolysaccharide. It only contains, I'm sorry, a homopolysaccharide. It contains only glucose units. So here's an illustration of starch. And we just have glucose unit after glucose unit. There are two types of polysaccharides contained in starch. This is amylose. Amylose is straight chain, and all of the linkages are alpha-1,4. So this looks like glucose units that are holding hands. This to me looks like their hands joined together and here are their arms. And so their hands are down between them and they're just walking along in a straight line. And these, the amylose tends to have 300 to 500 monomer units joined together. The other kind in starch is amylopectin. And this is a branched chain polymer. So we've got basic chains, like here's a chain with alpha-1,4 linkages, but then to form the branch we have to have something else because each 
each glucose unit can only form two alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages. It's got one head and one tail, and they can hold hands that way, but they can't make any more. And so to get the branching, we have this alpha-1,6 linkage. So here's the alpha on the one carbon of this one connecting to the carbon-6 on another one. And so that forms a branch. And then on that branch, then you have another long chain. And off of that chain, you can get more branches. And so this is an illustration where each of these dots represents one glucose unit. And that's an illustration of how it could branch out. That's amylopectin. So amylose is straight chain, and amylopectin is branched. That's really the only difference between them. With the branched one, this one can have up to 100,000 glucose units. So the amylopectin is much larger with the number of, of glucose units. Now both amylose and amylopectin um, can form a complex with iodine. And we saw that last Wednesday, didn't we? The, these large molecules form a complex. They actually get around the iodine and that results in this really dark blue-black color. So that's a, that's a test for starch. Another polysaccharide that is used for storage is glycogen. Um, oops. It also contains only glucose units. Um, amylose and amylopectin are found in plants and glycogen is found in humans and animals and it's sometimes called animal starch as opposed to plant starch. Um, your body stores glycogen in your liver and in your muscles. It is very similar to amylopectin. The difference is it is three times as branch, so much more branching and it's a lot larger. Instead of hundred up to a hundred thousand, it's up to a million glucose units. And what your body does is when you've got extra glucose in your blood, your body will take those glucose units into your liver or your muscles and form glycogen out of them and store it. Then later, when your blood glucose drops too low, it will go to the glycogen stores and take glucose from the glycogen to replenish your, your blood sugar. So when they talk about carb loading before an athletic event, you're going to eat a lot of carbs so that you make sure that all your glycogen stores are full before the event takes place because that way you'll have the most energy. There are also structural polysaccharides and these give plant cell walls and animal exoskeletons their structure. Mammals have bones and birds have bones. Um, the things like insects don't have bones, and yet they do have structure. You know, if you step on a cockroach, it goes crunch, right? What's crunching? It has an exoskeleton that's made out of polysaccharides. Um, why do trees stand upright and not just flop over? Because they have structural polysaccharides in their trunks. So cellulose is one. It's the most ab abundant of the naturally occurring polysaccharides. And this is the fibrous... Uh, component of plant cell walls, especially that woody part of plants. So like lettuce doesn't have a lot of woodiness to it, right? But you wouldn't want to eat a tree branch because it's very woody and, and stiff. And so the, the woody parts of the plants have more cellulose than the non-woody parts. Cellulose is water insoluble, which is good because if it was soluble in water, then when you turn the sprinklers on, your plants would dissolve, right? That wouldn't work, work real well. It's an unbranched glucose polymer. It has beta-1,4 linkages and about 5,000 glucose units. So this is smaller. They, they all run together after a while, don't they? This is smaller than the... Uh, it's about the... No, bigger than amylose, smaller than amylopectin. But this is straight chain. But you see the difference here? These guys, it's not... They're not forming a V, like hands between them. It's like this is the, the child who's lifting his hand up to hold the parent's hand. This is a beta 1,4 linkage instead of an alpha 1,4 linkage. And that's really important because we can't digest cellulose. 
because of that beta-1,4 linkage. It requires a different enzyme that we don't have. So we can't eat grass and get nutrition out of it. We can't digest the cellulose. Grazing animals, horses, cows, goats, sheep, they eat grass and they derive nutrition from just eating grass. And yet they also lack the enzyme to digest cellulose. But what they do have is they have bacteria in their intestines. The bacteria produce the enzyme. And so that's a very symbiotic relationship. The bacteria produce the enzyme that allows the, the cow to digest the grass and then the, the bacteria benefits because it has a place to live. Um, and yet cellulose is still important um, in our diet. It's a dietary fiber. Uh, it readily absorbs water and softens stools. And so, you know, getting enough cellulose, getting enough fiber is important. Chitin is another structural polysaccharide, and this is what's found in exoskeletons of crabs, insects, and other arthropods, uh, lobsters, shrimp, those sorts of creatures. It's identical to cellulose, except on the glucose monomer units, we have, these are actually amino sugars, amino sugar derivatives, so we have this uh, N-acetyl amino group. So this is N-acetyl-D-glucosamine, or it's abbreviated NAG, N-acetyl-glucosamine. And we'll, we'll see this come up again later as well. So chitin and cellulose are very similar, but chitin has this extra functionality on it. 